Welcome back to Peaches Teaches, the show where I teach everybody tuning in each episode how to do just about anything. <laughs> you like that? You like that? Tis the season. <laughs> oh, okay, so I had to demonstrate my witchy powers. Peaches Teaches magic. <laughs> this month episode, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> Ooh, girl, if I don't die first. <laughs> October, butternut squash, cinnamon roasted style. What you are going to need for this Peaches Teaches is Alakazam. Ooh. A butternut squash. Why is this what my face is shaped like when I'm in drag? <laughs> All jaw. Olive oil, two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of brown sugar, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a teaspoon of salt and pepper. I kind of want to do more than that. Yeah, we're definitely we might be doing more than that. And that's all you're going to need for this Peaches Teaches. Um, yeah. May's craze was, yes, two days ago. So this is actually October that I'm filming this. I keep messing with this because I feel like my titties are splitting this open. Anyways, May's craze, so much fabulous fucking fun. I think October 6th was the date that we went, so middle of the season. It was really fast this year, but when my, when my sister's on a fucking mission when she does it, honey. She thinks she, like, gets a prize at the end or something. <laughs> so, um, oh, this year I wore this. And I, like, you know, switched it up a little bit with my look. Um, but that's kind of something I want to talk about in a little bit in this episode. Um, oh, this is just plumber's tape? I thought it was some fancy seal. Okay, so, maize craze. It's in New Springfield, Ohio. They grow a corn maize. Plow that shit down every year into a cute little scene. This year was the junk, the Jungle Book. And there is 12 stops and you get 12 tickets and you go through the maze and at each little booth they have a wine to choose from or a cider to choose from to taste test and you get fucked up and lost in the maze. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then at the end, if there's something you like, you get to buy it. Well, before we even went in the maze this year, we got this gorgeous, ooh, look at this. I didn't even realize this was on the other side. Oh my gosh. When I took my photo, I would have turned it this way. Anyway, <laughs> beautiful. This is their alcoholic cider, and it is lavender honey, honey. And, um, we're gonna drink it because my mom saw, it says, please enjoy one week after purchasing. By one week after purchasing. So we're going to be busy. Wow. That's not what that. That smelled funky at first. <laughs> oh, and then I have this. Hocus Pocus. Which would be crazy. Which Hocus Pocus 2, honey. Five out of five peaches. And I think that's about as much as they would, as much as they give, because they have to make sure everybody gets a little bit. To Hocus Pocus 3. <laughs> or the new series that everybody thinks is coming out because everybody's complaining that this movie was to set it up. Did they give me the wrong fucking cider? <laughs> Whatever this is, <laughs> it is not the lavender honey cider that we ordered. Okay, um, of course I dribbled before we even start cooking. And super important, tea spilling announcement. No. <laughs> After thinking and like just really thinking and 
and some more thinking. Um, I want to start transitioning as soon as I possibly can. And I was just going to say, I haven't even talked to anybody about this, not even my mom. I did, though. There's been a couple of times where I was like, I just would like to start at some point hormones because I want to. <laughs> Boop. Um, watching Umbrella Academy, which I really love that show. Watching the most recent season with Elliot Page and Victor, the character, and the like the way that they wrote the storyline in that for Victor it just made me feel very comfortable and I like I liked seeing it not be such a big deal you know what I mean um even though like obviously real life situations it is a big deal a lot of time to a lot of people but that's what makes it like really scary for people to come out is because they don't ever see support like that, or at least they don't think they do. You know, it's so easy to focus on the ne- look. Who, it's so easy to focus on the negative things and try to, and sometimes ignore the positive things. And here I go, going on and going on. When all I wanted to do is hop on here real quick and be like, "I'm transitioning and chop up a fucking butternut." Um, <laughs> but yes, so let's hop into it. Because it's 8.13 up in this bit. There's an announcement more important than that. No. <laughs> it's not even a big of an announcement because I'm realizing now I've talked to my mom about it. And before I even ever came out of the closet, I remember being like, oh, I want to get plastic surgery because I want to get this done and this done. <laughs> okay. If you see the broken radio behind me, please ignore it. Okay, so, <laughs> as you see here, this is a new fucking stove. Well, at least it's new to us because our other stove, as you've seen in past Peaches Teaches, was from the 70s or the 80s. Let's go with the 70s because I'm a groovy bitch. Um, <laughs> this stove was bought within the last 15 to 20 years because I was alive when it was bought. This is the code. The cove, the stove that was in, oh, I don't, don't, oh, uh, Mia, no, Mia Nona's Cucina. This was the Caico Familia. I don't know what the word for stove is right now. <laughs> but this was the Familia stove of at Grandma and Grandpa's house. Um, funny little thing, I spent two days straight scrubbing this to be ghosted by my dad for a month <laughs> before he helped install it and look okay i'm not sure if you can see right there it wasn't even wasn't even that new yet and my fucking uncle burnt a lasagna in it <laughs> classic you know what i mean classic Heiko. to be quite honest i don't remember the ciders being this carbonated or this strong. Also, this one smells like the one that the two guys were like, don't smell it, just drink it. Get your butternut squash, we have to get working, honey. I do not have limited camera. I guess we'll just start like this, honey. Oh, what if I like soaked this in Mod Podge? And then made like a little fascinator. Oh shit, this could go bad. Oh shit, 10 out of 10. Okay. Let me get an apron before my grandmother's ghost shows up and fucking whoops my ass. <laughs> Anybody else obsessed with Rabia Shadri's and Ellen Marsh's new podcast? Even though it's only been like two episodes and one was just an introduction. Obsessed. Two women from my culture is coming together to create a show. I'm like, <laughs> Also, the news about Adnan Syed. Fucking finally. Fucking finally. Girl. And listen, this is an opinion. I'm not trying to defamize anybody. Y'all gotta look into the streaker. 
not because he's a streaker, but because I listened to the True Crime Obsessed podcast and them covering the um, case of Anna Syed on Netflix. And after listening to the podcast, it just doesn't add up the, the like drunk streaker. But I want to hump, hump, hump. <laughs> oh my God. I want to jump on a movie review real quick while we begin peeling our butternut squash, okay? Hocus Pocus 2 is everything I needed. Um, just absolutely everything. No personal complaints, but there is a spoiler coming up. Hey, um, I really have nothing to say but watch the movie yourself. It is so good. I didn't think that they would be able to serve a number as good as I put a spell on you. But one way or another, they did it with one way or another. <clears throat> I just thought of that in a moment. Um, I love how, like, the new coven. What I like how. <laughs> I like the new coven. And you know, bitch, I'm all for diversity. I love that too about the new, like the new witches. Um, Cause Kathy and Jimmy was like the diversity of the last group. And speaking of Kathy motherfucking the Jimmy, first of all, this lipstick. Bye bye, <laughs> honey. I already talked to my sister and my mom, and if we ever do the Sanderson sisters costume, I'm Mary. And those two are left to duke it out between Sarah and Winnie. Like how Sarah and Winnie are always fighting and Mary's off in the background just doing her own thing. <laughs> I want to meet Kathy and Jimmy. I want to work with Kathy and Jimmy. I don't know how that would be, but I hope somehow that works into existence. <laughs> I've been looking into like trying to audition for like Netflix shows and different stuff like that. Um, oh, girl. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, what else is, oh, Kathy Najimy. I just found out she's Peggy Hill from King of the Hill. Mind blown, completely destroyed, like, like, fabulousness. And I don't know if you, if anybody listening or no, anybody watching watches Good Witch, but if you watch Good Witch, I am absolutely obsessed with Good Witch. I'm absolutely obsessed with Catherine Bell as Cassie Nightingale, but I'm just obsessed with Catherine um, Bell in general. Because when I first heard of her, I know her as like Hallmark Good Witch, just like so polished and reserved and like mm, da da da. And then she had like this whole modeling career. And like I found this photo of her modeling with the motorcycle i'm like go off Catherine motherfucking bell and i was telling my mom i just love that um how she was able to have that modeling career but she's also able to do a show like good witch and be on like the hallmark channel i like when people aren't boxed into categories and i like when people don't put themselves in cat like too like boxed in in the things that they do but the reason why I bring up Good Witch is because there was an episode where Cassie Nightingale was being given an award at the school she attended. And Kathy Najimy was in that episode. And I'm like, not only do we have two iconic witches coming together, Mary Sanderson and Cassie Nightingale, even though she wasn't playing Mary Sanderson in the you get it. We had two Middle Eastern icons on screen together. Oh, I know it's not like the first time, obviously. <laughs> it was just such a big moment for me. I was like, yes! Yes! But let me tell you something about the cast of Good Witch. Fucking hot. <laughs> Girl, I wouldn't be able to live in Middleton. They don't let ugly people there, honey. <laughs> and listen, I, I I strive to be Cassie, but I always end up being Martha or Abigail. Let's be honest. I have two seasons left before I finish the show, 
and I am beyond excited. But I haven't even watched the movies yet because they want you to pay or have like Hallmark premium and I'm like, sweetheart, I can, have, I can only have so many premiums before it would be redundant and I should just go back to cable. And just like that, through some bullshit and we got that card peeled. I forgot to turn the stove on. Yeah, why didn't you remind me? <laughs> okay, put this on four, set. Four seventy five. Four fifteen. Four tw four twenty blazing. Okay, four twenty five. Four twenty blazing. What does that even mean? I don't know what that means. Cut the bottom off. Insert your knife like so. and slowly work your way down. Oh wow, this is gonna be a lot easier than I thought. I thought there was gonna be so many seeds to empty out. I don't have time this episode. I'm gonna have to talk about She-Hulk and Ms. Marvel next episode. I really recommend a spoon because you could just scoop the guts out and then you could just use the spoon to scrape out any like stuck guts. You thought I was gonna leave you hanging. No, no. The spoiler from Hocus Pocus is, in the very first film, Max read how a black flame candle is made. And it is by, like, putting a dead body on a rope, like, hanging style, you know, and then collecting the fat to make this candle. They just glossed over the fact that Gilbert in the second movie had to kill somebody to make a black flame candle. And Gilbert just gets away with it at the end of the movie. Another mind-blowing scenario and situation. More mind-blowing than... No, not more mind-blowing than Kathy Najimy being Peggy Hill. <laughs> so I'm started by cutting the, like, cantaloupe-looking slices, you know? How big they are. They don't say how big. I'm going with this big, okay? Seems easy. Let's do it. There, so I'm gonna pause this and cut the rest because I'm running out of camera time. I'm back because I wanna show you, okay. Carefully. You have to be so careful doing this part, okay? Okay. Like that's gonna help. <laughs> See, that's how I did that, okay? Please be careful, Habibi. So we got all of our butternut squash diced up. And our oven is just preheated. So go ahead and add two teaspoons of olive oil. Oh, happy. Italian Heritage Month, that is the month of October. The olive oil reminded me of it. <laughs> Two tablespoons of brown sugar. I wanna stir the olive oil first. Um, I really recommend adding the olive oil yourself. The two tablespoons was definitely not enough. Butternut squashes are like people, they're all different. Maybe they anticipated a smaller one. What I anticipate is me going to get a larger bowl. <laughs> I've decided I'm adding the brown sugar. It's, it's all A1 now, honey. 
This is half of a fourth cup. And that was brown sugar. Go ahead and add two fourth cups of cinnamon. I mean brown sugar. Okay, this smells like a tomato. Weird as fuck. Cinnamon. I will be adding Calm down, it wasn't that funny. Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing at the fact that I, my swift ass only dropped four right on the counter. A tablespoon of cinnamon was the perfect choice for the size of butternut squash I had. All that's left is black pepper and salt. And what I learned from listening to Allie Ward's podcast, Ologies, and the Cucurbitology episode featuring fabulous author Anne Copeland, she wrote Pumpkins, Pumpkins, and um, her in her book, she preferences that when it comes to salt, it is not a necessity. If you don't add salt to your baking, to what you're making, you're not going to ruin it. And some people, for health reasons, can't have salt. The whole seasoning attack on fate on like social media is wild. I've been a part of it before just because I was trying to like, oh, I'm a part of everybody. You got it. <laughs> but I am putting a little bit of salt and some pepper. I was just going to get this glass dish, but I saw a baking sheet. Spread your... Butternut squash out like so. And it says roast for 20 minutes at 425. So we'll see. Oh, also, Grandma Kaikos, Grandma Kaikos, Grandma Daniels. I always call her Grandma Shirley. It's very interesting. I don't say Grandma Mary. And I say Grandma Kaiko and then Grandma Shirley and Sweet Baby Daniels. Fierce, fabulous, and fun. Well, I guess I'll be back in 20 minutes to see if this shit's done. Ooh, bitch, I'm a witch casting spells. <laughs> okay, so our butternut squash is done. Da dun dun. Da dun dun. Da dun dun dun. Ah. Let's get a wee, not a little drink, shall we, in it? Pump, pump, cheer around. I'm barely giving this any time to cool down. Wow, quite honestly, I was expecting this to be fucking shit. Look at this. That's how soft it is. Yet, yeah. they're a little caramelized on the outside. Mmm. Be careful, but five minutes longer, they'd be a lot more like crisp. While the oven cools, because I turned it off now, I'm going to put the tray back in. This would be a really fucking delicious side for Thanksgiving in place of sweet potatoes and yams. Or 
doing sweet potatoes and yams in this exact way because texturally raw, they're not too far off from a butternut squash. So yeah, this is five out of five butternut squashes. Wow. I never had squash this good, honestly. So five of five, speechless. Five out of five peaches. So fucking delicious. I'm just still like, I'm shocked how good this one came out. I know I did add more brown sugar and cinnamon than it said to, but just like the texture and flavor and how they cooked alone is just like really phenomenal. Like this is a really good recipe to follow, I feel like. We have two calendar recipes left for the year and that will kind of wrap up this series within a series. Um, I'm really excited to have done this because I just like having my own self-produced stuff and I'm really enjoying building up my dossier. I have a series where I turned phobias into makeup. I have a fashion series where I review and rate fashion based off of my own opinion because that's what fashion is all about is everybody's individual opinion. I did a podcast for a year. I've been doing 60 plus episodes of Peaches Teaches and within that I have done cultural cuisine twice and I have done this and I plan on launching Peaches Reteaches, not even launching, just redoing some Peaches Teaches that I think were kind of like duds and I could redo better now. Um, and I have my own, my own, my other podcast <laughs> that I am working on and I feel like I'm probably forgetting something, but I have built myself up quite a little dossier and um, yeah, I'm just proud of the work I'm doing and I want to work on putting out better content. Um, I started in 2020, so COVID and negativity of all that was getting really, really to me. Um, I hope you tune in next month, not for cranberry sauce, because honey, if you don't know how to make cranberry sauce, you need to go to like a child's cooking channel. No. <laughs> Sorry, sis. But um, we instead are going to be making, and this is in a way we are going to be making a cranberry sauce. It is going to be a cranberry raspberry pie. And I'm probably gonna be serving that at Thanksgiving. So we'll be making that around that time, which we should really like change the day of Thanksgiving and change the name of Thanksgiving to just like family feast, festive, fun, whatever another word for day is that starts with F. <laughs> so like alliteration. But I just like getting together and eating honey. You know, I don't wanna celebrate genocide. <laughs> <laughs> a good time to wrap the show up. Thanks for tuning in to this deranged episode. Now, this was a fierce, fun, fabulous, well put together episode. <laughs> Bye. I didn't sing the theme song. Peaches, teaches all the different things that you can do. Beautiful. <laughs>